All right, so today I'll be talking about the consciousness of, share, of flourishing forever. The consciousness of flourishing forever. Praise God. Praise God. All right, um, one of the things that have been established before now is that there is what we call life after death. That's what we call life after death, uh, which means there's eternity, and we all need to have eternity in view. And God has promised us eternal life, right? There are a lot of scriptures that portray that fact that um, God himself has promised us eternal life. If you look at the book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 25, um, New International Version says, and this is what he promised us, eternal life. Somebody say eternal life. I can't hear you say eternal life. All right, so God has promised us eternal life. If you look at Titus chapter 1, verse 2, also the same translation, it says, in, in the hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time. So uh, the, the, I want us just to understand the fact that God himself has promised every one of us eternal life. Praise God. And then, then we need to embrace the consciousness of that eternal life. Uh, now that we know that there is life after death, we need to embrace that consciousness. And that can be done. If you look at the book of John chapter 6, verse 47, it says, very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. John chapter 6, verse 47. All right, friends, um, maybe before I go on, I want us to please get ready. If you have your Bible with me, we're going to be doing a kind of um, study today. Bible study. That's why I try to dress corporately. Praise God. Amen. So I'm going to be teaching. I'm going to be going. We are going to be looking at the scripture together. Are we ready? So bring out your Bible. If you are joining us online, also please get your Bible. We're going to be looking at the scripture together. So I'm going to be looking, quoting a lot of scripture. Praise God. Amen. Let me tell the person beside you, say, this pastor look good. Tell, tell, tell that person beside you, say, this pastor look good. Amen. Praise God. All right, so let's go on. So now the first thing we established is that God has promised us eternal life, and there is need for us to embrace that consciousness. The consciousness of the fact that if you believe, you will have eternal life. Uh, this popular scripture that we quote, um, Romans chapter 6, verse 23, also mentioned that also. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? I can hear you. Right, eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we need to walk with that consciousness, embrace that. And because of the statement also, there is need for us to live with that purpose and with that hope. There is need for us to live with that same purpose. In other words, you need to live intentionally. And with that consciousness that there is life after death, which means everything does not end here. We have to be very conscious. And these are the foundational teachings that uh, we've been hearing for the past weeks, right, that gave us that insight that God is saying that we need to be very deliberate the way we live our life. That is why in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18 says, So we fixed our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporal, but what is unseen is eternal. We live fixed our highs. In other words, with this season, there is intentionality in our operations, not just focusing on the things that is seen or that are seen. We need to focus on the things that are ahead of us. Is somebody with me? I remember on Sunday, we, um, when we were talking about this, we said there is um, uh, having the perspective of eternity. Praise God. Right. So it's very important. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2 also gave us that um, uh, emphasis, that emphasized on that also, that says we need to set our minds on things above. Please help me tell the person beside you, so you need to set your mind on things above. Praise God. 
And if you look at this, uh, this teaching also, I've been telling us over and over again that our motives will be measured. Our, uh, what sort of things we do on the surface of the earth will be measured. Last week, uh, we talked about um, living eternally by grace, live, uh, flourishing forever by grace. And today, I, I want us to just look at the scripture together. Um, last week, they gave us the Paul's perspective of this, and I want us to look at Jesus exhorting us in this regard. So we're going to be looking and studying the scripture from the book of Luke chapter 12. So bring out your Bible quickly, everybody. Right? We're going to look through that scripture, Luke chapter 12. And this is just to let us know the perspective of Jesus and what Jesus had to say to every one of us in regard, in relation to this aspect. Right? So we're going to look through, and we're going to look at... Um, Luke chapter 12, from verse 1 to the last verse. Do, you, do, do I have anybody that knows the last verse? What's the last verse? Huh? Verse 59. Right? So which means we are going to read the whole of Luke chapter 12, from verse 1 to 59. So all the person besides you get ready. Aha. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah, so this is what we're going to be looking at today, and I want us to please get ready, and I pray that God will open our eyes to this. And the reason why we're looking at this is just for us to have a clarity of what Jesus had to say concerning uh, for us flourishing forever, for us operating with eternity in mind. That is what we're going to be looking at. So let's get ready, and I'll be reading some scriptures, and then I will tell you my own thoughts. Please write your own thoughts down. Also, if you have your writing materials, please get ready to write some of the things. So let's start from Luke chapter 12 from verse 1 NLT. Meanwhile, the crowd grows until thousands were milling about and stepping on each other. Jesus turned first to his disciples and warned them, beware of the yeast of Pharisees, their hypocrisy. Now, let's look at that verse 1. Meanwhile, the crowd grew until thousands. The crowd grew. Uh, please underline that scripture. Meanwhile, the crowd grew. Uh, you know, the prophetic word for this year is for us to what? Blossom. So meanwhile, your business grew. Meanwhile, your social media account grew. Praise God. Amen. I know so many people are, are, you know, that is one of their desire. They are looking at people that are following them. Amen. That, meanwhile, this grew. Meanwhile, your business grew, your church grew, your influence, your ability to influence grew. You know, now, meanwhile, the, the prophetic word came to the extent that people were actually rushing towards you. Your ability to influence people grew. The word, the prophetic word for this year that says you blossom, you have seen that, that you are actually blossoming. This happens. And God now said to us, meanwhile this thing grew, the first person Jesus turned to in this point was he turned to the disciples. Let's read verse 1 again. He said, meanwhile, the crowd, can you help me display it? The, the crowd grew until thousands were milling around and stepping on each other. Jesus turned first to his disciples. Turned first to the disciples and then warned them. And that is what I want to look at this evening. Jesus turned. Now that you started blossoming, he turned to you, he's turning to us, and he wants to give us clarity and warn us of some things that will happen. In other words, when you start blossoming, there are some forces, there are some things that comes with blossoming. Just like when Jesus said, when there is, uh, Paul said, if, if, if doors, factual doors were open, but there are many adversaries. You know, so it's going to us that, look, this word will definitely come to pass. Despite the fact that the scripture has said it, there is need for us to be careful. I want to look at what they were saying here. When the prophetic word comes, it first turned to the disciples. What was it trying to do? It was trying, actually, to shift their minds off the crowd. Are you with me? The first thing it was trying to do at that point was trying as much as possible to shift their minds off the crowd. 
so that he can actually warn them. In other words, it is not about the blessing. It's not about you blossoming. It's more than that. Your life is more than just being blossomed. Your life is more than just um, flourishing on every side. It's not just flourishing now. The clouds are coming. Businesses are coming. And I see so many people that the moment they experience the blessing, they are out of God. And God is saying, look, let me warn you. What you are praying for will come to pass. The baby you are praying for will come to pass. But there are a lot of things that will come with it. Be careful. Tell the person beside you, be careful. Right. So I want us to quickly look at some of the things that Jesus was pointing to and was using to warn them. The first one he did was, uh, is he said, be careful of hypocrisy. The, the hypocrisy of the people. In other words, the crowd had the tendency to attract people that are full of hypocrites. They are full, they are hypocrites. The crowd, the business have, what does that mean? He said the crowd have the tendency to attract such people. Act, attract people uh, that comes with different intentions. Let's read for verse 2. Can you help me with that? So that we can see what I'm talking about. Verse 2 said the, uh, that the the time is coming when everyone that is co- everything that is covered up will be revealed, and all that is secret will be made known to all. Whatever you said in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be, short, will be shouted from the housetops for all to hear. You see, so he's saying here, this is what he was just talking about, that look, <laughs> when you blossom, right, when you blossom, they, they have the tendency to attract people that you don't know the state of their mind. You don't know their intention. So please don't be carried away by the crowd. Don't be cra- carried away by the followers. Don't be carried away by your business that's been, that is increasing. Don't be carried away by the influences that you have now. Be careful. Praise God. So that is what we're saying here, because you don't know the state of the mind. Because of our time, I'm going to be rushing through the old scripture. Is it okay? Is that okay? Can I go on? All right, so that is the first thing he mentioned. Let's go to verse 4. Verse 4. And maybe I will ask some, all of us to read it together. Verse 4. Can we read it together? Three go. Dear friends, don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot do any more to you after that. Go on. Go on to verse 7. Five sparrows, two coppers of coin. Yet God does not forget a single one of them. And the very ears of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Amen. So God is saying here, now that blossoming have started, be careful of the joy robbers. Be careful. Don't be afraid of the people that have the tendency to kill your joy. Don't be afraid to kill your business because they feel, oh, they are envious of you. Don't be careful, don't be, don't be so um, afraid of image spoilers. Don't be so afraid of negative publicity because this is one of the things that will happen. Don't be afraid of the destroyer. So God is saying to be careful because you have the tendency when this thing happens to attract such people. All they want is to see, oh, uh, is it the only one? That's the only thing they could say. His God is blessing him, and so is it the only one? Is it the, that is what they will say. They have a way of killing your joy. God is saying, be careful of this kind of people. Don't, in other words, the kind of crowd that will come, that will come to you, they come with different notice, different mindset. So be careful. Once again, tell the person beside say, be careful, oh. All right, so verse 8 to verse 10, together we're going to read it. Or maybe I should just quickly read it. Let's go on now. So we've talked about you. Be careful of hypocrite. Be careful of people that are joy stealers. Now verse um, 8. I tell you the truth. Everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, the Son of Man will also acknowledge in the presence of God's angel. 
But anyone who denies me here on earth will be denied before God's angels. Anyone who speaks against the Son of Man can be forgiven. But anyone who blasphemes um, the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Can you see that? So this next one says that when um, you begin to blossom, there is tendency for you wanting to hide your personality in God, right? And God is saying to everyone of us, don't hide who you are in God. Not this, one of the things I'm going, I'm going somewhere, and I just want us to please follow with me. God is, Jesus is taking their mind off the crowd, focusing on the disciples. He said to them, be careful, don't, don't shift your attention on what is happening now. Be careful because this has the tendency to take your mind away from God. And what God was saying in this scripture that we read is that don't hide who you are in God. Instead, use your social media to project God, not to criticize God. Many of us, what we do is that we try to play safe. And we're saying, friends, don't try to play safe. Stay safe. Are you with me? Oh, you don't want to talk about God. You don't want to, no, no, no. God is saying, look, this influence that you have is about the people, not about you. And some people, what they are doing is that they are trying not to let people know that they are children of God. Be careful. Once again, tell the person, be careful. So don't allow the crowd to take away God from you. Instead, take God to them. Are you with me? All right, let's go on, let's go on, let's go on. So let's go to chapter, uh, verse 11 and verse 12, verse 11 and verse 12. And when you are brought to trial in the synagogues and before rulers and before authorities, don't worry about how to defend yourself or what to say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at what time, at that time, what needs to be said. What do you think God is saying at that point? Anybody? God is saying here, when this cloud comes, don't try to defend God. Are you with me? Don't try to defend yourself under God. Don't try to let them, there's no need for you. You don't need to do too much explanation. God said, I will defend myself. As long as you can stand for me, I will defend myself. Are you with me? So these are some of the things God is saying here, that when the crowd comes, when the blessings come, please don't defend yourself. Praise God. Praise God. All right, let's go to verse um, 13. And I want every one of us to please open up. Yes, open your eyes, open your board, open everything. Amen. And we're going to read from verse 13. Right? Let's go, everybody. Please display verse 13. Then. Stop, stop, stop. Can we, can we say it clearly? We are going to read from verse 13 to 20. So let's read together. Three, go. Called from the crowd. Teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. Jesus replied, friend. Who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Then he said, beware, guide against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how... Yes, then he told them, verse 20, go to, we are going to verse 20, go on. Then he said to himself, what should I do? I don't have a room for all my crops. Then he said, I know, I will tear down my bombs, yeah, and build bigger ones. Then I will have room enough to store all the wheat and other goods, and I will sit. Praise God. Then all, go back to verse 20. Please display that verse 20. All you have worked for will be taken away from you. 
Now look at what this God is saying here. He's saying that, because God is saying that when the people see the crowd, you know one of the things they see? Money. The moment some people see crowd, the first thing that's coming to their mind is money. Or what I can get. What I can, that's the mindset people have. And God is saying, please, when you see this crowd, don't be. And the way he put it, he said, you should guide against all kinds of greed. All kinds of greed. Are you with me? So, you see, what, what I'm saying here is that it's taking our mind away from the crowd and it's telling us you need to guide against all kinds of greed. Don't focus on what to get from people. Focus on what to give. Don't measure your life based on your acquisition. That is what the Bible says. But it says measure your life based on impact. Live a life of relevance by making impact to other, with um, impacting others. Your life is not measured by your duration, but it's measured by your donation. You know, how many people, if you have, if you're working out, it's not how long that you stay in your office that matters, but it's how much people can thank God because you are in that office. That is what the scripture is saying here. Try as much as possible to guide against all kinds of greed. All kinds. Uh, time will not permit, I will have begin to mention different, different methods, different, different areas, right? So these are some of the things Jesus did. Now the first thing is, he shifted their mind away from the cloud, and now he had a mind shift. We're going to go to verse um, 21 now. There is another mind shift. I look at, I love this thing, I love this thing. Now look at, said, verse 21 says, Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly uh, wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. So what God was saying that is here is that, look, all this acquisition that you're thinking about yourself is going to be foolishness if your focus is not on God. That is why you have had the statement that so many people are equally relevant, but heavenly useless. And that is what the God is saying to every one of us now, that please don't focus too much on the things on the earth. Jesus turned this to disciples again and had a mind shift. A mind shift. Jesus said, a man is a fool by focusing or attaching his value on material possession. You are a fool. That's what the scripture is saying. You are a fool if your, your value is attached, your worth is attached on what you have. That is what the Bible is saying here. That is the definition of foolishness. Instead, let your value, your worth be attached to the fact that you know God. That is what verse 21 is saying here. And if you look at, there are a lot of scripture that says it. You, you remember uh, when Jesus... Um, Jesus sent the disciples out and they cast out devils and all that in the book of Luke chapter 10, verse 20. You know, the Bible says, don't rejoice. Verse 20 says, don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. You know, when they were casting out devils and they obeyed. He said, don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you, but rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. That was the mind shift Jesus now came. He said, now I'm taking you away from the crowd. Now I'm focusing on you. This is what Jesus is saying to every one of us now. Focus now on you. It's now focusing on every one of us. That don't rejoice because demons obey us. Rejoice. Don't rejoice because of the performance. Don't rejoice because of the wealth. But rejoice that you stay relevant to the things of God. Because that is what matters. And those are the things Jesus was now trying to say to every one of us. Look at, first of all, he take their mind away from the crowd. And now he's bringing their mind where? To them. And he was now pointing to them, and he said something to them from verse 20 to 22. Let's go on to verse 22. And this one, verse 22 to 30, we're going to read it together. Please, I would like you to read it loud. Now, this one is now about you. And this is the message to someone here joining us online. This is what God wants me to tell every one of us, especially at a time like this. Let's read Luke chapter 12 from verse 22. We're going to read it from verse 22 to 30. Are we ready? Are we ready? I can't hear you. Are we ready? Now listen, Bible says, then 
turning to his disciples, which means Jesus turned to his disciples again. And look at the, the first thing he said. Let's read it together now. Three, go. Jesus said, that is why I tell you not to worry about everything, everyday life. Whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes, for life is more than food and your body more than clothing. Look at the ravens. I can hear you. And you are more precious than 25. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And if worry can't accomplish a little things like this, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't walk or make clothing. Yet Solomon, in all his glory, was not dressed a beautifully. and thrown into the fire tomorrow, it will certainly... 29. And don't be concerned about what to eat and what to drink. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelieving. Unbelievers, right? Your father already knows your needs. So... God pointing, turning to you, the first thing he's saying to every one of us is, don't worry. Be happy. Can you turn to the person beside and say, don't worry. Be happy. Are you with me? So now, God, God turning to us this evening and he's saying to every one of us, yes, I know the economic situation of this nation is so harsh and all that. God is saying, don't worry. Listen, I will take care of you. Right? I've taken your mind away from the crowd and I'm now turning to you. And I know the first thing that is disturbing you is what you are going to eat, what you are going to drink, where you are going to live, what, where will the next meal come from. And God is saying, look, you are more precious to me. Don't worry. Help me tell the person beside you again, say, don't worry. don't worry. Or go to the chat room, guys, and say, don't worry. Ah, so God is saying to every one of us that don't worry about every day's life. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. All right. Like I said, we are still going to 57, so I don't want to stay too long there. Let's, let's go on, let's go on. Now, what do, do you think God wants us to worry about? Verse 33. Next, let's, verse 31. Let's start from verse 31. Everybody read it now. Praise God. Stop there, stop there. He said first. You remember I said he's taking your mind away from this and he's now focusing on you. And the first thing he says is to you that don't worry. And now he's saying that the most major thing, remember what verse 21 said? Verse 21 says that you need to have a relationship with God. And he said, if you have that relationship and your relationship with God is intact, don't worry. Don't worry. I will take care of you. And now he's now saying to every one of us now, seek first. Somebody say, seek first. All the person besides say, you need to seek first. Right? Seek first the kingdom of God above all else. Above your marital destiny, seek forth the kingdom of God. About your business, seek forth the kingdom of God. And all the pursuit of life will be given to you. Right? Verse 22 now says, So don't be afraid, little folks, for it gives your father great happiness to give you your inheritance. To give you your kingdom. It gives God. In other words, if you don't have what you deserve, God is not happy. If you don't have divine health, God is not happy. So don't think that God is happy that you are not happy. Don't. Oh, you are saying, you are saying, is it you only me? God is not even happy. He said, I wish above all things that you prosper. When you are in debt, God is not happy. And God, God is saying that, look, this is not the time for you to be running elter skelter. Just make sure you seek me first. Seek me first. Is somebody with me? He said, he said, he gives your father. Somebody say, father. 
It gives your father great happiness to give you your heart desires. It's God's desire to give you all these things. Amen. But he says, look, look, what will make it work easily is verse 33. What will make this thing very, very easy is verse 33. Let's read verse 33 together. Everybody, come on display, right? Praise God. Sell what you have. Sell your possession. That is shocking, Abby. How can I even sell my television, sell my this thing? What God is saying here is that you need to invest in your eternity. Are you with me? That is what God is saying here. You, most of us, what we are investing and doing, you are focusing majorly on this earth. And you have left eternity. There is no eternity in view in all your perspective. There is no eternity in view in all the things that you do. It's God is saying, look, that is why you are struggling. That is why you are always thinking, you're going to marry. You're going to, uh, yes, I said, this is my desire. You will have married. But when I see that your focus is about the things of the kingdom, I will give this thing to you. That, in other words, God is saying that stop investing in all this called local, local, local. Invest in the things of the kingdom. Is somebody with me? So jack the person beside you again. Please say, invest in the things of the kingdom. In other words, God is saying that there is need. You will blossom here on earth and you also blossom in heaven. God is saying, look, it's my desire that you will blossom forever, which means you will blossom here on earth through eternity. That is the desire. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? So that is what God wants us to do this season. Be heavily conscious. Have that consciousness that there is something ahead of you. So invest in that place. So many of us, you don't even know where your future will look like in heaven. And God is saying, what you do is that take care of people here. We will get there. Let's go on to verse 34. Oh, time, time, time. Quickly. So the Bible says, wherever your treasure is, there the desire of your heart will be also. That is what I'm talking about. Be eternity conscious. Praise God. Be eternity conscious. Verse 4. I think I'll spend a little time here in verse 4. Let's read verse 4. 34, right? Oh, 35. Let's read that verse 35. Oh, it's not this. I said, look at your Bible. They did not display it. You don't have it. All right. Read it together. Shout it now. And say it again. Can you say it again? See, this is now your role. For you to be relevant, internal, internal, in. in Having eternal life and relevant eternally, eternally. Amen. You need to dress for service. Are you with me? And not just that. And also keep the lamps burning. I see something, something, what most of us, what we do is that we dress for service. But the lamps are not burning. As so many of us, that's what we focus only on the dressing. Not just service to come to church because you dress neat, fine. Look at the person beside you, you dress well. Uh-huh, just like me, praise God. He said, you dress for ability to serve. God, yes, God is saying, yes, there is need for us to prepare. But the most, uh, the, the most important part of it is to ensure that you keep your lamp burning. To stay relevant. Remember the story of the ten virgin in the book of Matthew chapter uh, 20, verse 25. The ten virgin, right? They were dressed for service. They dressed, they put on their garment and all that, which means it's very good to, be, to dress ready. And the good thing about it is that they were, their, their lamps were born in. The ten of them. But what differentiates the two? One focused on the presence, 
the alarms were burning. But the other one ensured that they kept the lamps burning. And the ones that ensured that kept the lamps burning were the ones that God reckoned with in eternity. Are you with me? And how, what do I mean by all these ones? Let's, let's take a little, um, uh, let's, let's move it off the scripture a bit just to explain this. Let's look at the book of Leviticus chapter 6 verse 12 to 13. Leviticus chapter 6, verse 12 to 13, it says, And the fire upon the altar shall be born in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood. Somebody say wood. Shall burn wood on it every morning. And lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And it shall burn thereon the fat of the peace, of the peace offerings. Verse 13. Everybody help me read verse 13. Can you read it again? That is what God expected us. For us to stay, to flourish forever, ensure that your lamps kept, keeps on burning. And one thing that is significant here, to make your fire burn continuously, is you need to hard wood every morning. You need to hard wood every morning. Always add the wood to your lamp to keep them burning. Add the wood. You need to add the wood of prayers every morning. Add the wood of, of the word of God. Add the wood of the oil of the spirit. Add the wood of creating the atmosphere of praise so that your fire can continually burn. Many of us, you don't even have any wood. When, what you are using is activities. No wood. And that is not what we make your fire burn. It is not just coming to church that will make your fire burn. It's not being in the unit that will make your fire burn. No, God is saying, look, 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 what will make you stay relevant? You are dressed for service. It's okay. Activity is part of dressing. But what will make your fire burn that will make you stay relevant and make you flourish forever is when you continually hard wood of prayers, had the wood of studying of God's word, had the wood of the oil of the spirit, believing in the power of the Holy Ghost, had the wood of creating the atmosphere of praise. These are the things that will keep the fire burning. Is somebody with me this morning or this evening? Oh, I can't hear you. Are you with me? So you need to keep the fire burning. So remember I said dress for service and keep your lamps burning and not this there are a lot of woods woods that are blowing on your altar blowing on your lamps wanting to quench the lamps from burning lot of woods um, 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 as winds or oh, somebody will say oh my candle lamp wind cannot blow it it's, it's, you know we wind supposed to aid combustion am I right aha uh -huh. but you just imagine <laughs> if they're not do Praise God. So, and God is saying to every one of us, listen to God, listen to us. These winds, we need to be careful of these winds. These winds, you need to guide against these winds that is targeted towards quenching your fire. And the winds are everywhere, blowing over you, blowing over your properties, blowing over everything that concerns you. Right? And God is saying, guys, guide those winds. Don't allow them to affect your homes. In the book of Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, it was talking about um, the, the, the churches, the seven churches. Remember those seven churches? Right? I, many years ago, I, sp I spoke on this um, teaching. I think it was 2012, there about. Right? 12 years ago. I spoke on keep your lamp burning. You can get the tape. God bless you. Amen. He said, so, you and I'm going to share some of the things that the highlights there. So it was talking, if you look at Revelation chapter 2, from verse 1, and downward, chapter 2 and chapter 3, it was just talking about the seven churches. And it was telling them that, look, there is the lampstand, and there is lamp. So the lampstand represents your dressing. But it said, make sure that the fire does not go down. 
And then Jesus, um, the revelation was now alighting that these winds were blowing on these churches and it's making their lamps to go out. The winds were blowing on each of the churches and different churches have different winds that were blowing. Like I said, time will not permit me. So let me mention some of the churches now. We have the church of Ephesus, um, Ephesians. In the book of um, Revelation 2, from verse 2 to 5, when you get home, please kindly read it. The first wind that was blowing on that church was the wind of first love deficiency. That is the first wind. The wind was blowing. And if you look at the scripture, it said they have left their first love. They have left their first love. They have left their first love. I, I call that church the doing church. The doing church. Because everything you see there, it was talking about, I saw your labor, I saw this. So you have left your first love. It said do the first work. That's why I call it the doing church. And that is what God is saying to every one of us here. The wind of lukewarmness, the, the wind of first love deficiency is what is blowing to many people. And what God is telling every one of us now is that to many of us, you need to return back to active service. Somebody will say, I'm old. I want to retire because of we are saying the young people are taking over. So I'm old. I want to see God is saying, look, your first love is what we, is being affected. These are the winds that the enemy is blowing. And you are also aligning with the devil to ensure that the, your fire goes out. God is saying, no, 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 no. Return back to active service. Don't allow the old age syndrome make your love go down. Another wind that is blowing on the church of Pergamon. The, church, the wind of wrong association. The wind of wrong association. These are winds that blow some people that make them to compromise their values. These are the winds that blow some people that make them to... So when you get home, that's why I'm saying I'm just rushing because of my time. These are winds that blows. I don't know the winds that is blowing on your own direction. It might be the winds that you have left your first love and God is saying to you, return. You cannot retire. Let me tell the person beside you, you cannot retire. Oh, oh, that person, I say it louder, you cannot retire. You need to refire. Caleb said, I am 80 years old. I still have the strength of a man that is 40 years old. Give me the land and I will take over. And that is the thing we need to put on now. Don't give up because younger people are coming on board. Don't give up because you feel you are not relevant. You are very, very relevant. Help me tell that person you are relevant. So, now, the wind of wrong association, that is one that affected the church. That is second, um, uh, Re Revelation chapter 2, verse 12 to 17. Chap Revelation chapter 2, verse 18 and to 29 also talk about it. another church, and it is the wind of sexual immorality. Sexual immorality is the wind that is blowing. I will put it this way, permissive attitude towards sexual Misconduct. These are the winds. Anything goes. Ah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Anybody can do anything. You can sleep with, you can be staying your husband's, um, somebody that you're not married to, you can be staying in that person's house. It doesn't matter. Uh, you, you, you are not staying in your father's house. You are staying in your boyfriend's house. Are you married? No. Are you going out? No. You are just friends with benefits. Permissive sexual misconduct. These are wins, and then your spiritual life is not going down. You are so much focused on the earth that you are useless in the heaven. These are the wins, and these are the wins that was blowing to that church. Please, God is saying to us, let's guide against this. Another wind, that is, another wind blowing now is the wind of pretense of hypocrisy. Hypocrite, the winds of pretense. They have the form of godliness. They do, they look like someone that looks like it, but yet they are not. You go and read that scripture. The wind, people live a fake life. You see on the social media, that is what they are using to, de to deceive your destiny. They will stand before somebody's car. Uh, it's my car, it's my house. And you say, hey, uh, and he's just 12 years old. And he's just, I, me too, I want to. These are winds that is blowing. You will not miss it. Oh, come on. I say you will not miss it. So these are winds of hypocrites, winds of pretense. You have the repetition of you being alive, but you are dead. That is what the scripture put there. Another church also from um, Re Revelation chapter 3 verse 7 is the wind of complacency. 
complacency. These are the winds that is blowing on that church, and they are, they are, they are, it looks as if the light is going down. You remember the scripture we are, we are elaborating on? Verse, what is that? Verse 35. What does verse 35 say? Please, can we say it? And keep your lamp burning. So we are guiding against those winds that have the way to quench your lamps. The wind of complacency. You have little strength, but you don't want to go the extra mile. You are not striving to increase your capacity. These are winds that are blowing. So when you get home, please go and read it so that you, you can relate with what the things I'm saying. Another, the last church I'll mention here, which is common now our days, is the wind of lukewarmness. Winds of lukewarmness, sitting on the fence. You are neither cold nor warm. And God said, I'm going to split you out. These are the wings that make you feel that, look, let them just do it. Let them, let them continue to do it. Some of us, we find ourselves in it. Even me, I find myself in it sometimes. I just don't feel like doing anything. Amen. And then I'll be seeing my fire. I'll be going down. I was telling my past, some of the pastors, I said, I think I need to go for retreats. Amen. So that I can keep the fire burning. And I discovered that any time my, my fire is going down, I begin to misbehave. I don't know if it has happened to you. You just get angry. You just be irritated by everything. When things like that is just an indicator that your fire is going down, keep your lamps burning. Hallelujah to Jesus. Can you put your hands together for Jesus? <laughs> Amen. All right, let's, let's go on. Let's go back to uh, scripture. <laughs> oh, God of heaven. Let, this time around, we just rush it. Amen. I hope somebody is getting something here this, month, this evening. Now, verse 35, uh, 36, verse 36 to 40. Let me, let me see if I can read, fa read it fast. I will call one of the pastors that can read it. Amen. Is Pastor, are you there? Bring the mic. Can you come and be reading? Oh, yeah. Come and be reading. Come and be reading. I need somebody that will help me read fast. Are you there? All right. Everybody, let's read it together. Three, go. Otto, 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 you will stole my destiny. Please, I need a power of destiny there. Please bring the mic, bring the mic. Pastor, I'll bring the mic. Anybody that can read fast, please, help my destiny. You can read fast. Put your hands together for Pastor Ayo. Amen. Hallelujah. We will do this thing together. You can read it there from there. Just read. We are on verse um, 39. 36, okay. Okay. As though you were waiting for your master to return from the wedding feast, then you'll be ready to open the door and let him in the moment he arrives and knocks. Go on. The servants who are ready and waiting for his return will be rewarded. I tell you the truth, he himself will sit there put on an apron and serve them as they sit and eat. He may come in the middle of the night or just before dawn, but whenever he comes, he will reward the servants who are ready. Understand this, if a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would not permit his house to be broken into. You, must, you also must be ready all the time, for the Son of Man will come when least expected. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Are you there? I love you. I love you, brother. God bless you. Let me put your hands together for him. My destiny is secured. Amen. So can you say that? That this one is just saying to every one of us, you know, he's saying to us, despite the fact the fire is getting burning, and you're, you're burning your fire, uh, your lamps is burning, and uh, you're dressed for this, he said, ensure that you prepare for his coming. Prepare yourself for his coming. Prepare yourself. That's what he's saying here. Remember, that, at least you follow the scripture, right? Prepare yourself for his coming. That is the first the, the, the point there. Like, like, like for you to flourish forever. Start now and prepare. Prepare. Start preparing. Don't think that it will not come. He said it will come like a thinking in the light in the eyes when you are not even preparing. So prepare. Tell the person beside say, prepare. Oh. Yeah. All right. Pastor, I over to you again. Let's go to verse. Uh, what next? What verse is that? Verse what? 41. 
All right, so verse 41, let's go on. Then Peter asked, Lord, is that illustration just for us or for everyone? Go on, yes. 42. And the Lord replied, a faithful, sensible servant is one to whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household, household servants and feeding them. If the master returns and finds that the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. I tell you the truth, the master will put that servant in charge of all he owns. But what if the servant thinks the master won't be back for a while and he begins beating the other servant, patting and getting drunk? The master will return unannounced and unexpected and he will cut the servant in pieces and banish him with the unfaithful. Hmm. And a servant who knows what the master wants but isn't prepared and doesn't carry out those instructions will be severely punished. But someone who does not know and then does something wrong will be punished only lightly. When someone has been given much, much will be required in return. And when someone has been entrusted with much, even more will be required. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do you understand what that scripture, what does that scripture say to you? Anybody? For me, it says, prepare others for his coming. Are you with me? Do you get that? Prepare others. If you go back to verse, verse um, 41 and 42, it gave that clarity. Your responsibility, let me read verse 41, let's read verse 41, yes. It said, and the Lord replied, a faithful, sensible servant is one to whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his own household, his own household servant, and do what? Feed them. Your responsibility as a wherever position you have is not to feed yourself, it's to feed others. Prepare others for his coming. I see so many people, what they do in the office, they are, they are trying to satisfy themselves and their family. Something that is meant for other people, help other people grow. They are only focusing on themselves. And God is saying, look, you are unfaithful servant. When it, the time of judgment comes, you are going to be penalized. So when you think that, yes, you are only preparing for yourself and all that, and God is saying, oh, it's good, but it is not left for you alone to prepare for yourself. You need to prepare others. Tell others about his coming. Help others discover themselves. Shine your light and help other people to shine their light. In other words, some people's light will shine when they discover there is a light in you. The Bible says, as long as I'm in this world, I am the light of this world. Can people say, I, am, I thank God because I know you? Can people say that? Or instead of, instead of that, they said, if you are a Christian, I will never become a Christian. Prepare others. And your responsibility here is that you should feed the people. Feed them, not make them. You see, that scripture we read, it said some of them, instead of feeding the people, they are actually taking everything to themselves. Feeding themselves. And they are punishing people, helping people. You have the capacity to help somebody become great, but, you're, but yet you will hinder the person. Is somebody with me? And that's why this evening, God is challenging us that for you to prepare yourself and for you to be relevant internally, you need to be conscious of your effort now. Prepare others. You are coming to church and you are the only one. You come with your right and there are people on the street that you cannot even extend and of fellowship. Somebody stay in your street and is coming to church. You cannot even help the person to come to church together. The same church, oh. Prepare other people. Prepare other people. Your smile alone is enough to get somebody well. That is why some people have shared testimony. Testimony that when time they see somebody say, welcome to the church, welcome to the church, it gives them the best. And you, you have the best set of teeth. And you're saying, mm. come on, come on, come on, come on. You are in the office. You have the ability to influence somebody. And you're still holding things, holding informations. It's not. Prepare some people. That is what he said. If God has given, the, the, given you the privilege to be in the position that you have, don't think it's because you are qualified. No. The reason why you're in that position is because of somebody. Thousands of people's lives are being attached to you. Their destinies are attached to you. That's why the scripture says the endless expectation of the creature. They are waiting for the manifestations of the source. 
And the only thing you are doing with your own life is, I just want to be okay. As long as I'm okay, it's okay. God is saying to every one of us, don't live a useless life, a life where your own, the only thing that you are concerned about is yourself, your family. If, if those ones are okay, you are okay. You are not okay. You are not okay. Prepare others. God says a steward, a responsible steward has been given. You are a steward and you are going to give account. Of that office you are occupying, you are going to give account. Don't think you are there by mistake. No. No. The reason why people are suffering today is because most of us in this nation, we focus on ourselves. Outside the nation, we focus on ourselves. And God is saying, he will give the word. So prepare others for you to flourish forever. Do this work. Do this work. You read from verse 54, it says, it was talking about it, it said, you understand when it's time for rain to come, you know it is time for rain. When, when, when uh, the cloud is uh, begin to gather, you know it's time for sunshine and all that. He said, if you understand all these things, can't you understand the present times? Can't you understand that the world, the end of the world is now? The world is coming to an end very soon. Can't you understand? Famine will happen. Even the Bible says, in the last days, the love of many will wash cold. Can't you understand? You need to understand the time and the season that we have. Don't just come to church for coming sake. Some people come to church are looking at the grammar of the pastor, and that is the only thing you are focusing on. You are missing the most important part of it. As much as that one is important, though, right? <laughs> Listen to me. I'm saying here, you need, you need to understand the season that we have now and do something with your life. Let me tell you the truth. It will, things will not get better. Are you with me? In the world, things will not get better. That is why the Bible says the mountain of the Lord will be exalted above every other mountain and the people will rush into it. In other words, the only security you will express is in the house of God. The only security is when you find yourself in the presence of God. That is the only place you can get comfort. When the people are saying there is a casting down, in other words, in the world now, there is going to be a lot of casting down. But for you and your family, they'll be lifting. Your amen. amen is encouragement. Amen. Understand the time that we have now. Understanding that alone will help you to do the right thing. To help people grow a step further, an extra mile to make somebody better. Understand that the world, any time from today, Jesus will come. You like it or yes. It is written in the scripture. Understand when the Bible says uh, that there will be earthquake, there will be all the things that is happening now has been written just to let you know that the devil, the end of the world is close by. But what will you do with the end of the world? I will close with this last scripture, verse 57. Can you help me read or oh, display that scripture? And then we will pray. Verse 57. Everybody can we read it. Can you read it loud again, please? Why? Why can't you decide for yourself what is right? Why? Why delaying your salvation when you know that Jesus will come any moment? Why? Why can't you decide to make someone better now that you have the opportunity? Why can't you decide to do the right thing? Can you just bow down your heads and just talk to the Lord? Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me. Help me, help me, help me, help me. Yeah, Kaloshka, for us to flourish forever. Decision is what determine destiny. Just ask God, I've come, oh God, I need a renewal. I need my fire to burn again. Help me. I've come to decide for myself to take the right step, to take the right move. I ask for grace. I ask for grace. Yes, I ask for grace. Can you pray? Can you just pray? Can you stand on your feet? If you can, please, can we do that quickly? Just stand to your feet. Can you stand this evening and just begin to ask God, Lord, help me, help me, help me. I surrender all to you this evening. Help me. I make up my mind, oh God, to live a life of impact.
I make up my mind, oh God, to live a life of impact. Help me this evening. Come on, come on. Can you just pray that prayer this evening? Just ask God, Lord, I turn on to you. I make up my mind this evening. Lord, why can't you decide for yourself what is right? This evening I decide, oh God, to live a life of impact, to stay relevant, to live and flourish forever. I make up my mind to affect, to impact lives, to live a life of influence. I made up my mind to be away from greed, to be away from hypocrisy, Lord, to be, not to be carried away by fear. Oh God, I made up my mind this evening. As God, I surrender all to you. Help me. I don't know the wind that has been blowing over your destiny, breathing or blowing over your spiritual life. Ask God, Lord, I receive deliverance today. If it is the wind of immorality, if it is the wind of fear, ask God, Father, shield me from this wind. Oh God, shield me from this wind in the name of Jesus. Is it the wind of love, uh, first love deficiency or the wind of lukewarmness? Lord, shield me from this love, uh, from this wind uh, and help my fire to keep burning in the name of Jesus so that I can stay conscious oh God of me flourishing forever some people it is hot it's been with me is the hot unforgiveness is that wind that is blowing upon you that is not making you to flourish God ask God I surrender all I surrender all in galabo shenke reboske libarosha Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Can you, I want to give opportunity for someone here this evening. The scripture says, why can't you decide for yourself what is right? You know you are not yet born again. Or maybe you are born again, you are backslidden into sin. This is an opportunity for you to come back to Jesus. Come back to Jesus. If you are here, you want to give your life to Jesus, place your right hand on your chest while other people are seated. Please, you can remain standing. If you want to give your life to Jesus, remain standing. Put your right hand on your chest as I pray with you. Make up your mind. Make that decision for yourself. Make that decision for yourself. Oh, yes, thank you, my brother. Thank you, my sister. Hallelujah to Jesus. Yes, why can't you decide today? Today, decide what is right. Your friends have been telling you that you need to give your life to Jesus and you have been procrastinating. Postcast, you have been postponing. This is an opportunity. Say, Jesus, come into my life. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my sister. Hallelujah to Jesus. You are watching us online. Kindly do the same. Going back to Jesus is what makes you stay relevant. Oh, yes, thank you, thank you, Father, thank you, Father. Manga lebosha. Can you just repeat this word after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. Forgive me. Today I turn myself to you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Deliver me from sin. Help me. I know I'm saved. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can I pray with you? Father, thank you for all these people giving their life and rededicating themselves to you. I ask, Lord Jesus, that, Father, you will keep them. You will preserve them. They will not miss their destiny. They will not miss their place in destiny in the name of Jesus. They will stay relevant in the name of Jesus. You will help them. You will help every one of us watching online, here physically. Ask, Lord, that you will help every one of us who will stay relevant. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Daystar, raising role models.